Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Interesting People You've Never Heard Of. Today's interesting person is actually a dog, namely Laika the Space Dog. Moscow in Russia is one of the coldest capital cities in the world. The average winter temperature is minus 10 degrees Celsius. In January 1957, during a particularly harsh winter, a starving stray dog was foraging through the snow, searching for scraps of food. The poor mongrel tried begging strangers for food, but they just walked past, ignoring her. Just as the wretched animal was about to give up hope, a man in a military uniform approached her. The man threw her a piece of roast beef, which she devoured hungrily. The man threw another piece of beef, which was gone in seconds. The military man then led the dog to his van. Uh, she, of course, hopped in cheerfully. The dog wagged her tail with happiness. She couldn't believe her luck. She was going to be adopted by this kind stranger. As the military man and his newfound companion drove back to headquarters, he petted her and said, You are about to embark on a very special mission. The Soviet Union at the time was engaged in a fiercely competitive space race against their great rivals who were, of course, the USA. Both nations scrambled frantically to become the first nation to reach outer space. At the time, no one had yet been into outer space, and it was decided that before human lives were to be put at risk, it would be preferential to test spaceflight on animals first to test whether it was safe to send human beings on such a perilous mission. <clears throat> After the success of the satellite Sputnik 1 in October 1957, the Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev wanted a satellite launched by the 7th of November, which was the 40th anniversary of the October Revolution. Soviet planners and engineers decided that in the interests of safety, this next flight would feature an animal passenger rather than a person. Training and preparation began in earnest at Star City, the famous Soviet cosmonaut training facility. There were a number of dogs uh, undergoing the training, but one particular dog stood out. Her handlers named her Laika, which roughly translated from Russian means something like Barker. Laika and the other dogs were mostly strays from the streets of Moscow. It was believed by the scientists that the life of cold and hardship and hunger made them tough and better equipped to deal with the arduous challenges of space flight. Laika and her canine comrades were subject to a barrage of brutal trials, including powerful centrifuges that simulated the acceleration of a rocket launch and machines that recreated the deafening noises of the spacecraft, which must have been terrifying for the incomprehending animals. In order to adapt the dogs to the tiny confines of the Sputnik cabin in which they would eventually be launched, the scientists placed them in increasingly smaller and smaller cages until their living conditions became so cramped they actually stopped urinating and defecating, which naturally caused their health to deteriorate. Nevertheless, the scientists pushed forward with the selection process and eventually, after more gruelling tasks, Laika was chosen as the candidate who would fly into space aboard Sputnik 2. She was chosen because of her resilient nature and, just as importantly, her calm demeanour. The technicians became very fond of Laika um, and one of them even took Laika home to meet his family and play with his children. Uh, for the first and only time in her life, however briefly, Laika knew what it was like to feel like a real family pet. On the 3rd of November 1957, um, just before the deadline, at Baikonur Cosmodrome in remote Kazakhstan, Laika was placed into the capsule of the satellite Sputnik 2 and prepared for launch. A heater was placed in the cabin to keep her warm, uh, electronic sensors were attached to Laika that would measure breathing, pulse and blood pressure. The technician fondly kissed her nose 
and wished out Bon Voyage as he closed the capsule. At 7.22am Moscow time, the rocket was launched and Laika, the stray mongrel, soared into the morning sky. After reaching orbit, Sputnik 2's nose cone was jettisoned successfully. However, the craft's block core did not separate as planned, which prevented the thermal control system, which controls the heating, from operating correctly. Some of the thermal insulation tore loose, which raised the cabin to an uncomfortable temperature of 40 degrees Celsius or 104 degrees Fahrenheit. <clears throat> After three hours of weightlessness, Leica's pulse rate had settled back to 102 beats per minute, three times longer than that had taken during ground tests, which was an indication of the extreme stress she was under. The early telemetry indicated that Leica was agitated about eating her food. After approximately seven hours into the flight, no further signs of life were received from the spacecraft. Since the incident, there have been conflicting reports of what caused Leica's tragic death. The Soviet Union claimed at the time that she died from asphyxia, but years later, a leading scientist from the mission revealed that the brave dog had actually died uh, when the cabin overheated on the fourth orbit. Whatever the cause, after five months, the satellite plunged back to Earth and disintegrated on re-entry, uh, eliminating any possibility of an autopsy or finding out uh, what actually killed Liger. At the time, the space race was an issue of such importance that the death of a stray dog barely warranted any attention uh, in the Soviet media or the international press. Subjects like politics, economics, nationalism and war took precedence over the rights of a mere animal. However, as the decades passed and sensibilities changed, attention was finally paid to this courageous canine. In 1998, after the collapse of the Soviet Union, one of the leading scientists from the mission, Oleg Gazenko, expressed his sincere regret over the needless death of Liger, saying, The more time passes, the more I'm sorry about it. We shouldn't have done it. We did not learn enough from this mission to justify the death of the dog. Animal rights activists voiced their outrage that an animal was compelled to undertake such a dangerous and terrifying mission that she was, of course, unable to comprehend, let alone consent to. As a new post-Soviet generation became aware of the case, there were calls to commemorate Leica. On the 11th of April, 2008, at the military research facility, where staff had been responsible for readying Leica for the flight, officials finally unveiled a monument of the dog, poised on top of a space rocket. Commemorative stamps and envelopes picturing Leica were produced. While the statues of nearby cosmonauts often stand empty and unattended, the statue of Leica is always surrounded by flowers and cards from well-wishers from all over the world. Less than four years after the death of Laika, Yuri Gagarin became the first human being to reach outer space. His mission, Vostok 1, utilised information, data and experience learned from the Laika tragedy. Thanks to this mongrel dog, thanks to this back alley stray, men could now reach the stars. Well, that's it for today. Um, thank you again for watching. I will be back very soon with another interesting person and until next time, goodbye.